everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night five of the 2024 Summer Mini Skein Mini Series. Each night this week I have been dyeing mini skein sets of five 20 gram mini skeins and I've been dyeing them with the intent to create a set of colors that could all be used together in one project. So far we've played with some tonals, some glazed tonals, and then last night I did a one pan variegated set before dyeing each of the five colorways individually. But it was really the same technique on all of the yarn, just slightly different amounts of color. Tonight we're gonna do a little bit more of a color challenge and I'm gonna dye five different techniques on our yarn so that way we have a set of five mini skeins but each of the colorways were dyed a slightly different way and have a more planned colorway to start with. I wasn't entirely sure what palette I wanted to use. I pulled some colors based on some of the Dharma acid dyes I have in my collection and then went to start playing in paint. I knew for sure I wanted to do a resist colorway. I really liked the combination of peach with a dark teal and wanted to bring that in to our set somehow today. And then using this palette with I want as much of the blue, but starting to bring in some of the dark blue. I had many dark blue and gray options I could use. I started playing around with different techniques, whether it's dip dyed, a more classic yarn mop, where the colors are randomly placed, uh, doing something that is more speckled or scribbled, and then looking at some more random powder applications. And then finally, just a classic variegated colorway. There are more than five options here. And I wanna make sure we have a cohesive set that feels both unique from things I've created the other nights this year, but also unique from one I may have created last year as well. And so of these seven colorways I sketched out, I picked five that I thought I would like to do in a approximate progression that maybe those colors would go in. The final five colorways I decided to play with today were Dharma Acid Dyes in Peach Blush, Bright Aqua, Sand Dune, Teal Green, and Indigo Blue. The Indigo Blue is more of a minor player. Really, those other four colors are going to be the main ones, but I may bring that Indigo in in more places as I feel it's needed. The five colorways that I've planned out don't just vary in terms of the technique and the placement of the colors. They vary in the saturation of the color. And so theoretically, we'll be starting off with a skein that has less pigment in it and then building to something that is more pigmented. For me, this is a very more obvious way to approach a fade. I find it a little bit more challenging if I want the saturation, that final like depth of color to feel consistent across the way and shift from one color to another. My goal here is with the exception I think of the dip dyed skein and the blue in some of the colors, is to use most of these colors on every skein to, I guess, showcase how you can dye multiple colorways with the same color combination and then use them together in a project. And of course, I knew while doing this, there's a chance that I would dye something up and not love it. So maybe we would need to go and do a sixth colorway, but we're gonna cross our fingers and well, get ready to go dye some yarn. For our yarn today, we are dyeing 20 gram mini skeins from Wool to Dye For in a variety of different weights and fiber contents. We have everything from fingering to worsted weight yarn, and the fiber blends are all superwash merino based. Some are 100% superwash merino, some are 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then we also have some blends with some of their fibers like yak or silk. <laughs> in all of the examples here, I'll be dyeing 200 grams of yarn in each of the five colorways. And with the exception of one of the colorways, all of the yarn I pre-soaked overnight. But in our resist colorway, I did start with our yarn dry. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves to prepare the dyes for our scribbled colorway. For our first colorway, I wanna do a scribble dyeing technique to give us some softness of color, but include our peach blush, bright aqua, sand dune, and teal green 
pretty much all over the yarn. We may also leave some whites behind as well though. I measured out 0.5 grams of each of these four colors and then I dissolved them in hot tap water. And then I added the dye to one of my little tulip one step tie dye squeeze bottles, which each hold approximately 150 milliliters of water. So I added the dye that I dissolved into that container and then rinsed out the cup slash filled the container up all the way. And so I guess this would give us approximately a 0.33% stock solution. But anyway, this is the strength of dye that I want to use to scribble onto our yarn. I added 200 grams of yarn to my catering steam pan and then covered the yarn with eight cups of water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. Then I brought over four of the colors that I had dissolved, one at a time. Teal green, sand dune, bright aqua, and peach blush. Given that teal green is a much more saturated color, I really only used it once per flip but I used more of the other three colors, sort of randomly scribbling shapes and swirls onto the yarn. At the time I started, I was unsure if I wanted to try to spread the colors a little bit with a spoon or let them be where they were placed on the yarn. So I waited to see what the color looked like on the yarn before determining if I wanted to bring that spoon over to work things through or not. With only 200 grams of yarn in the pan, things weren't that crowded, so I knew I wasn't gonna need that many flips, but I still wanted to wait in between five to 10 minutes before flipping the yarn. That way, even though we might get some spread, we'd also get some of these colors remaining where I placed them originally. I think I have one main edit from the sketches I did at the beginning, and Therefore, I think that this is gonna be the only colorway that doesn't have any indigo blue at all, but we'll see how everything comes together. In the end, even though we got some spread from that teal green, I decided to not use the spoon to work it through. As spread out as the yarn is, in theory, if these were full skeins, I could have just done two flips. But since these are mini skeins, there's a greater chance that some of the minis could be trapped underneath others and get less color. So particularly with our lighter three colors, the aqua, sand dune, and peach blush, I did move a third and maybe even fourth time to add a little bit more of those colors just to make sure that we got a nice distribution of them throughout all of our skeins. Once I was satisfied with the color coverage, I heat everything for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. The next technique is one of my favorites. It is a very artistic one. There's not really math or measuring involved, but I'm taking our straight dyed powder in all five colors, applying it onto 200 grams of yarn and eight cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar. Since I'm working with the dry dye powder directly onto the yarn, I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, obviously. Uh, and then using a lot more of the sand dune and a little bit less of our deeper colors, the teal, green, and indigo, I added on dye powder in random areas and then used my spoon to work it through and spread it through the yarn. This will give us a variegated yarn. We could end up with some speckles here, but we're gonna let things strike and spread. If I was doing this technique on full skeins, then there would be a lot more variation because as you go look at one skein, you could see, okay, there's areas where we have more of our peach, areas of more teal. But with mini skeins, the colorway is gonna be a lot more repeating because the, they're so narrow that it's hard to get more variation and randomness throughout it. But overall, that is what this technique normally does. It gives you more random placement of the colors and I adore that. I waited five to 10 minutes in between flips of the yarn, eventually turning the yarn inside out to see if I have any white patches left. Not that I mind white patches, I just don't want large, uninterrupted patches of bare yarn. Some white and pastel is still fine because this is a colorway that is still on the overall less saturated side. But again, I'm gonna rearrange these colorways once things are dry to see what kind of order I feel works well. 
Once I was satisfied with the color, I heat everything for 30 minutes, then turn off the heat, remove the yarn, and set it aside to cool completely. One other note, I do have a skein of Swish DK off camera that I've been using as a yarn mop to wipe the excess dye off of my gloved fingertips uh, in between colors. It's really important to have your fingers be clean and dry before you put them in another dye container because you don't want to introduce moisture or, or contaminate colors with other pigments. For a more repeating variegated colorway, I started cold with no acid. So that way I could apply the dry powders directly to the yarn and work it through. I started in the middle with our bright aqua. I'm not blanking on the name, which is funny because I just put it away. And then it spread out to do our sand dune peach blush and teal green. Originally in my sketch, I had none of the deep blue, but I decided that I did want to add some indigo speckles once I finally added heat. I waited eh, 10 minutes before I flipped the yarn over and applied dye to the other side, really working it through. The benefit of starting with no acid is that the dyes are going to strike a little bit slower, which means I can spread them out on the yarn really well. Then I brought the yarn over to my stove and added a few tablespoons of white vinegar and I even added a little bit of water on top of where the peach blush lay so that way we wouldn't have the teal sort of moving onto our lighter colors. And then I started heating things up. And once things were hot, then I added some of these indigo speckles down near the teal and aqua and I'm actually really happy that I decided to bring that color in because that blue is in most of the other colorways and I think for continuity it helps to have some of it there. I waited five minutes before flipping the yarn to speckle the other side. When I flipped the yarn for the first time I lifted it up and there was a lot of color in there. I don't know if that was from the indigo or from the teal but I started to hesitate about how I was going to add the yarn back in because I didn't want that color to really sully our too much of our sand and peach. So what I did was tip the pan so all the liquid was down on the far side. And then I put the teal end of the yarn into that first and spread it out so that way any water moving back towards the other end would almost get filtered through our teal and aqua hopefully. <laughs> and then I added a little bit more water down at the peach end. And then I brought in the indigo speckles for this side, but I've decided I'm not going to flip the yarn anymore. I'm going to wait 10 minutes and then add more acid and a little bit more water. Uh, so then I can finish that 30 minutes of heat. But I like what I have and I don't want to risk disrupting it too much by moving things around. <laughs> then I heat the yarn for 30 minutes and remove the yarn to set it aside to cool completely so we can wash it. And as for the yarn mop that I don't think you've really seen at all yet in the video, uh, I took that over to my steamer basket and steam set that for 30 minutes to finish setting the color. On 200 grams of dry yarn, I added three removable nylon zip ties across all of the skeins to give us three, well I suppose it'll be six total but three main resist points. In a dye bath that I was heating up, I started with 16 cups of water, four tablespoons of white vinegar, and then I added two grams of Dharma's teal green acid dye that I had dissolved off camera. I didn't worry about the volume here because I know I wanted to add all of the dye. Once our dye bath was hot, I brought over our dry resist yarn and let it sink into the dye bath, heating for 30 minutes or so, or until almost all the dye had absorbed onto the yarn. And this will give us that base layer, so that way once the yarn is cooled, I can remove the zip ties and we can see those resist marks that remain. So then we can now apply dye in those areas. I removed the zip tie resists from the yarn and then spread it out so that way I could see as much of the white areas as possible. Using some of the leftover liquid dyes that I had mixed up for the scribble dyeing colorway, I applied the liquid dye to our white areas of the yarn. I started to add some bright aqua, but then realized that bright aqua at a higher strength really looks a lot like teal green. 
where it's less saturated. And so I cover that area with some of the indigo blue that I'd mixed up just in case. And I'm really glad I did. In the other sections, I used the peach blush and the sand dune. And I know the sand dune may feel extremely pastel once the yarn is dry, but I'm glad that there's a hint of it in this colorway. I twisted the yarn a little bit so that way the sand dune areas are on top of each other, the peach blush are on top of each other, and then moved the yarn into the steamer basket where I steam set it for 30 minutes to set the color of these resists. Finally, we're gonna have our dip dyed colorway, which is gonna be pretty simple as I'm dip dyeing our yarn first into the teal green and then into some indigo blue. I set up the dye bath with 16 cups of water, four tablespoons of white vinegar, and then 0.75 grams of the teal green dye that I dissolved in hot tap water off camera. And then after I added those 0.75 grams of dye and was filming the voiceover about it, I realized, oh, I wanted to add 1.25 grams of dye of each color. So that way we could have a total depth of shade on our yarn of 1.25. I forgot. So I quickly went and I put my respirator mask back on and measured out an additional half gram of our teal green dye. So we could have a total of 1.25 grams of dye in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then I brought over our pre-soaked yarn. It had pre-soaked in no acid. And I started dip dyeing into the teal green color, trying to go slow so that way our teal would be concentrated more at one end than the other. Even if there was a little bit of color left in the pot, once I was satisfied with our color coverage and most of the dye was gone, I removed the yarn to let it cool enough so I could move the zip ties. And then I added a total of 1.25 grams of our indigo blue dye so that way we could prep for the second dip dye. I moved the zip ties so that way they would be located at the darkest end of our teal and then started dipping, dip dyeing into the indigo adding that lightest end into the dye first. And I continued dip dyeing until, again, I absorbed most of the dye and then added all the yarn into the pot and let everything heat for 30 minutes. Once most of the indigo dye had bound to the yarn, I added an additional four tablespoons of white vinegar before dip dyeing some more and then eventually adding all of the yarn into the kettle to heat set for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes were up, there was a hint of some blue left in the dye bath, so I added a big glug of white vinegar and just set the whole thing aside to cool a bit, so that way we could slowly see if we absorbed that last little bit of blue or not. After about an hour or so, I removed the still warm but not hot yarn from the dye bath and set it aside so it could finish cooling so then I could go ahead and wash it. I dyed all of these colorways over the span of one day and waited to let them cool so I could wash them together, starting with some of our deepest colors because I wanted to see if they would bleed. Now we're washing everything in cool tap water with a little bit of dish soap and so if things are going to bleed, they're a little bit less likely to do it in this situation. If yarn were to bleed, it could happen for a few different reasons. One of them could be that there's just too much dye on the yarn, or it's a pigment. Some pigments are just known bleeders. We didn't see bleeding today, which is great. However, sometimes hot water can disrupt the interactions between your acid dyes and your yarn, and so that's why we wash everything on cold. Now, the other nice thing about doing everything in one day for a project like this one is that as I was working on colorways, even though chronologically I started with the dip dyed colorway, I could look and see the intensities of the different colors and that helped me determine, okay, maybe I need to use a little bit less dye on our random dye application set versus what I'm doing on our cold process so that way that can fit in before it in the color progression. This isn't always something that works, but today I think that worked out really, really well. Once I was done washing the yarn, I put it through the spin dryer to remove a lot of the liquid and then hung it up so it could finish drying. And now, well, I'm excited to show you our sets. Here we have five different colorways dyed with five different techniques. We have our more scribbled 
color away. We have our dry powder, variegated and speckled. We have a cold process, or at least cold start, variegated and speckled colorway that is more repeating than anything else we have here. I grabbed the wrong resist. I grabbed the one with the yak. Let's swap this. Do, do, do. Okay. Then we have our resist dyed colorway and finally a dip dyed colorway. And the whole thing I think works so well. Uh, and we've got this collection of five colorways. Now, as I go start to twist up these mini skeins, I want to bring in one of each on the same yarn base so we can see that a little better without sort of the variation that we have here. Because for example, on the resist, you can see that the skeins have shifted a bit. And so that changes where some of the color placement actually is. But the main thing to be aware of right now is that these first two colorways are more random as they're dyed on 100 gram skeins than the rest. But when we look at the mini skeins, it may not be quite as random. Here we have one set. I think this is probably our Krypton Sock yarn base. But either way, you can see how our dip dyed colorway is likely gonna be repeating, probably micro stripes depending on what you're making. Here we have more regular color sections even within the resists. And so you could have pooling, um, depends on the stitch count. This again is a repeating colorway. The speckles will be a little bit more random. But then on these 20 gram mini skeins, if we take a closer look at it around, it is a little bit repeating just because, you know, there are some areas where we have some color here and not there, but the mini skein is so thin that we end up with a little bit more consistency as we look around it. If this was a 100 gram skein with the colors more randomly placed, it might be slightly less consistent and a little less repeating or potentially pooling. This is really just an artifact of dyeing 20 gram mini skeins versus 100 gram skeins and a big, I guess, difference that you can see between the different colors. But we do end up with really pretty yarn. I have to go and twist up all the rest of the minis, but oof, this is such a pretty little collection. Oh no, I put it in the wrong order. <laughs> I mean, you could obviously knit it in whatever order you want, but this order gives us more of a fade. Obviously you can knit with the colors in whatever order you want, but I think one thing that here that works is that when we have some of the background white left, the tone of the sand dune and that color works well with it. So that way we don't have one that feels like it's more pure white versus the others. The colors sort of blend in in an extremely pleasing way. And oh, I'm so proud of this. Our yarn mob from the colorway is beautiful and honestly would work really well in the mix. Although there are definitely some similarities between our yarn mop and I would say the second colorway, even though maybe we have a little bit less sand and some of the colors are more intense just because they're a little more concentrated. If we start looking at multiple different yarn bases, the colorway is really similar across them. The one main exception comes to our that yak base, but also the diamond sock, the silk blend, those two tend to be a bit different. They are especially both a little more standouts this time because the that yak has that brown base color. And I think the color of sand dune is very close to the color of the natural yarn base. If we take a look at the worsted wool next to it, when the sand dune's a little more concentrated, that's definitely deeper than the color of the base. But on the first colorway, you can't really feel the sand dune at all, where you definitely feel it on the silk and the other yarn bases. Now, the silk looks a little bit lighter, well, certainly than the yak, but also than, say, the sparkle or other versions of that base, because even though we are super wash wool, that base just absorbs a little bit less. Well, it's a question, right? It either absorbs a little bit less color because the non-silk blends absorb the color faster, or 
because we know that silk blends need more dye to look the same color. Uh, it's just, it did absorb the same amount of color, but the same depth of shade is just less. And it could be a combination of the two. It's one downfall of dyeing a lot of different yarn bases side by side, but consistently the diamond sock, that silk blend is a little bit lighter. I think this colorway looks gorgeous on all of the different yarn bases, which is nice. You always, well, it's really more for like the silk and for the yak versus the mane, but occasionally there's yarn bases that look better on some colorways than others. Like a Donegal tweed base has specks and is a busier yarn base to start with. So sometimes some yarn colorways are my favorite on that base versus maybe not my favorite because maybe the colorway is competing with the neps. But I don't have a nep colorway that I use this year, so I'm just yammering on about nothing. Originally, I had hoped to do a whole other batch of this colorway to see how doing it a different day, how close I got to reproducing what I created the first time. Certainly with the dip dyed colorway and even the resist, that is a little bit more easy to reproduce and probably even the scribble than where I'm adding the dye a little bit more randomly. It would be really easy to go way darker or way lighter depending on my mood. But unfortunately, I had an injury, so I was not able to do another batch. And so we don't have that comparison of the first batch to the second. But if this is something that you would like me to revisit, not that I would still have the yarn on hand, but if you would like me to revisit this colorway, I am very open to it. I also really want to use these colors in some kind of sock blank. That's something else I regret that I did not dye up for tonight, and I hope to do at some point in the future. So if you want a sock blank inspired by this set, let me know and maybe we'll create one for Dye Pot Weekly soon. Tonight is night five of the Summer Mini Skein mini series, but we're not at the end. There are still two more videos, even though they may not feature as many minis. <laughs> Tomorrow night we'll be dyeing a full skein colorway that well, I guess the one little sneak peek that I'm gonna tell you is that it's drawn on some things that I've showcased in this series already. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> but I adore that colorway and can't wait to see it. And then on Sunday night, there will be a behind the scenes vlog where I'll talk about some of the things that have been going on throughout this whole project. <laughs> and you'll get a look at the packaging and the extras from when I wrapped up these mini skeins to send out. Now, there might be some mini skein sets still available from tonight and from the previous nights. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And if I have not updated the listing to let you select which night your minis have come from, if it's still a mystery, feel free to send me a DM on Etsy if you want me to check and see what bases I have available from which nights. I'm happy to go and do that inventory check. But in theory, I have updated the listing so that way you can pick your yarn base, see what nights are available, or vice versa. And so fingers crossed that uh, I actually finished that. <laughs> Shopping in my Etsy shop is probably the second biggest way you can support the content here. The biggest way is by subscribing and watching the videos. The more you engage with likes and comments, the better the videos perform, and so that's really, really helpful to me. And all of that is free, because if you're enjoying the content, then you're gonna wanna interact with it anyway, right? Also, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on. In theory, YouTube should give you a notification at the start of a premiere or live stream, but sometimes I don't schedule and promote things in advance. And so, uh, yeah, having your notifications on is the best way that YouTube can let you know. Do I wish I had done anything differently in the creation of this set? I don't think so. I am really, really happy with how this turned out. I definitely drew from some of the other color challenges I've done over the years to know, okay, I think that these techniques work really well together as like a build of color and try to incorporate that experience into my design process. And so I'm really happy that I was able to sort of plan and I mean, it's weird to say calculate with colors, but I was really thinking with colors before going and starting this project. So maybe it's not the most 
measuring themed kind of project, but certainly it was planned and there's a calculated approach, if not numerically calculated approach. <laughs> And as we say goodnight, I have to ask, do you have any guesses of the technique I will be doing for tomorrow night? I am so, so excited for you to see how that one has turned out. I'm excited to go and edit that video, which is what I'm about to go do right now. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.